for a long time, the Lakers were rumored to be signing somebody and needing a big man, right? Especially when Mo Bamba went down. When Mo went down, it was like, Anthony Davis is our only real center, uh, right? All we have left is winning Gabriel. Lakers should and need to sign somebody. Lots of people wanted to see Dwight Howard. We know that they worked out guys like DeMarcus Cousins, Tristan Thompson, uh, and ultimately we saw nothing. I mean, even after the trade, uh, there was an argument to be made for the Lakers to sign a big man. I wanted to sign Whiteside for a long time. Ultimately, they didn't go and get him. Uh, he ended up going to Puerto Rico uh, and is playing over there. Dwight still in Taiwan, right? You got guys kind of going all over the place. A lot of the young guys were a little all over the place as well. Talked about numerous uh, just rumors and theories that were coming out about the Lakers signing a big man. And I just wanted a veteran leading type big man. Somebody with experience that understands the ins and outs. Because winning Gabriel and Mo Bamba are two guys that don't have experience. They're guys that haven't been tried, true, and proven throughout the playoffs. And I really just wanted a veteran guy rather than another young project, right? Um, Mo Bamba is that already, is that young project. And you already see the question marks of like him not getting playing time because Lakers are in a position where they can't really risk him uh, having his hiccups and having his bad moments and having his blunders, right? He's not a great defensive big man. Uh, he's a great shot blocker, but he gets into foul trouble really quickly. He's not very disciplined. And his offensive repertoire is very limited, right? It's kind of just more just spot up three point shooting, which can be fine and could be nice in doses, but he's not like this super elite level type of guy. Uh, where if you get a veteran guy, Yes, he's not probably not going to be this elite level type of guy because it's a free agent. If there was an elite level type of guy, it'd already be taken. But still, you get somebody that understands and is proven and true and isn't going to have the hiccups or, you know, isn't going to be a liability. And it's just nice to have a veteran guy on the bench. Exactly what we got uh, today from the Lakers. Uh, the Lakers ended up signing two new players to add to the roster as we make our playoff push. Uh, we got the play-in game against the Minnesota Timberwolves, and then if we win that, we play the Memphis Grizzlies, right? So it's nice to get some reinforcements, especially at the center position. Uh, the Lakers, the way that they were able to sign two players was they waived Davon Reed's, uh, uh, he had a non-guaranteed deal, so they waived him and brought in uh, two players that we're going to dive into here in a moment. But real quick, before we dive into that, uh, one thing I also want to clarify, because I saw a lot of people asking or just, uh, you know, leaving comments stating like, oh, you can't sign somebody for the playoffs, uh, outside of just like the news saying otherwise, uh, the reason you can is the rule for uh, playoff eligibility, because I think a lot of people get confused by that, or at least I've noticed that for a while now, um, not even just today when the Lakers sign guys, but the March 1st deadline is only for players that are being bought out, right, or waived at that time. Anybody that happens after that date, it's fair game, you can sign them, uh, or before that date. Anybody that's there before that date of March 1st, you can sign them. Anybody that's waived after that date, that's where they're not playoff eligible. So in both cases, the Lakers got two guys that are playoff eligible. But diving into the first one, Shaquille Harrison. Um, now, this one may be uh, the least familiar to some people. Uh, he was uh, from Tulsa. Uh, he played for the Tulsa Golden Hurricanes. Uh, he's still 29 years old, which, you know, isn't like 23 or anything like that, but he's not like, you know, 35. A 6'4 guard, point guard, you know, combo guard. Uh, got some good size. He is known for his defense. He's a defensive-minded guy. Uh, he was one of the better uh, G League guys for the Lakers. Uh, he was putting up triple doubles every other day. Now, the G League is not the same thing as the NBA, but still, he's a, a sizable guy. You know, 6'4", 190 pounds, really built, strong, stocky, uh, and is just a guy that can really do multiple things on the basketball court. In my opinion, I think the Lakers signed him for the guard matchups, right? Um, I think they signed him because he's a quick, young, athletic a strong type guy that you can throw on, you know, an Anthony Edwards in the play-in, or you can throw on a Ja Morant. You're probably not having him guard him for 30 minutes a game over a seven-game series, but 
especially when you get into the playoffs where you are playing seven games, you want to wear guys down. You want as many physical, strong bodies as possible. Like, you've even seen uh, scenarios where teams will put a guy in just to, like, commit some hard fouls because you want to wear down these stars. As Jean Morant, Anthony Edwards, you're not going to stop those guys. But what you can do is you can slow them down, make things as difficult as possible. And you got a guy in uh, Harris uh, that can really do that, right? Harrison can really pick that up and, and just be that valuable guy. Um, also, a guy that can, um, he's not an elite lights out three point shooter. He has a, improved over the years, um, but nothing like super standoutish. Again, he's more of like a young two way guy that they want to bring in uh, that's consistency, gives you another ball handler. Right, gives you another guy that can uh, help facilitate on the court, uh, play some defense, put some points, uh, put the ball in the hoop. For NBA standards uh, and NBA career-wise, he's he doesn't have anything that's really going to stand out. Um, his best season was with Chicago uh, back in 2018-2019. He was uh, getting about 20 minutes per game, and in that time where he was getting 20 minutes per game, uh, he was averaging about... Uh, six and a half point seven points. Uh, Portland, he did have a nice little stretch with Portland uh, where he played five games, 24 minutes, and he was averaging eight points. Uh, if you can get something like that where he just kind of comes in and knocks down a couple buckets here and there, um, but it's more just, again, defensive purposes. A guy that the Lakers really like or really high on uh, that thought he did a really good job uh, in in uh, the G League and wanted to bring him up and give him an opportunity. Uh, also, there's questions about Dennis Schroeder. I don't know if this correlates. Very well could, but um, Dennis Schroeder even, he was dealing with Achilles soreness, uh, which is why he didn't play. So this could just be a signing for that reason. Um you know, I'm not 100% sure, but we'll we'll see, right? Uh, I, don't be shocked if he doesn't play at all, right? Like, this is a guy that may never even see the court. He might just be there just for the sake of being there. Um, but I, I, I could see them throwing him in a couple spots here and there a night and just allowing him, again, just physical, hey, dude, I need you to go out there. I need you to get me, like, three quick fouls, right? Like, go out there, three hard quick fouls. Uh, you know, don't get a flagrant or anything like that, but you know, just your standard hard basketball foul. You know, he, it happens all the time. So that's probably where he lies. Uh, and then the big man signing, uh, which many people are excited for, many people wanted to see, is Tristan Thompson. Now, Tristan Thompson is still young, right? He's 32 years old, which is the prime for many guys, right? Many guys are in their prime at 32 years old. Um, now he isn't a true seven footer, right? He's closer to win winning Gabriel than he is Mo Bamba. Uh, he's 6'9", 254, um, you know, power forward center type guy, but he is an upgraded version of winning, right? Guy that is solid defensively rebounds like a madman. Um, a guy that you now can, can hit some shots and put the ball in the hoop a little bit. He's not a guy that's going to give you, you know, 20 a night. And that's not really what the Lakers need him for, right? It's, he's a guy that's just going to come in high energy, high focus, uh, just kind of just do the dirty work, right? He's a guy that, again, veteran guy, uh, has a relationship with LeBron James, has played with LeBron James, has won an NBA championship with LeBron James. So he understands, one, what LeBron expects, what LeBron demands, uh, what it takes to to go through the gruel and the grind of a playoff series, uh, you know, series after series after series, all the way to winning an NBA championship. And it's just another veteran guy. It's just a guy that can be there, work with the young guys, uh, be be a voice in the locker room, a guy that can kind of, you know, help right the ship uh, in key moments, stuff like that. And a guy that you can trust, right? Um, expect him to get winning in Mo Bamba's minute. I don't know for sure if they will, but don't be surprised at all if during the playoffs we don't see either Mo Bamba or Winnie Gabriel. Anthony Davis is probably going to play, you know, 38 to 40 minutes a game, and you're just going to need a backup to come in and play 10 to 15 minutes a game. Tristan Thompson is probably going to be that backup, right? Tristan Thompson is probably going to be the guy that comes in. Um, now, maybe he doesn't play. Maybe he's just there for insurance purposes, that very well could be the case, but like, again, don't expect him 
like expect him to probably play more minutes than he will. Darvin Ham also likes the veteran guys uh, over over the young guys at times. Um, so and he has like that favoritism at times. It seems like. And on top of that, LeBron. If LeBron's like, hey, I want Tristan in the game, he's gonna be in the game. Um, my only concern, which I don't mind, I have no problems with Tristan Thompson being the backup center. Um, I actually would prefer it because, again, a guy that has experience. Here's my problem is he hasn't played this year, and that is a real concern because we don't have time for him to get NBA ready. Now, he did have a workout, and the Lakers did work out several guys. Based on the reports that we got in that, he had the best workout out of anybody, and he was in great shape uh, and looked NBA game time ready. So if that's true... Maybe there won't be that downside. Now, obviously, again, we don't we're not expecting him to come in and be a 2020 guy. We're just asking him to come in and be a you know five and eight guy, which he's more than capable of doing. Uh, so that would be nice. Uh, you know, if if he gets 15 minutes a game, can he give us like you know six and six, which is a very real possibility, right? Um, I mean, for example, Indiana last year. Uh, he had a little stint with them, played 16 and a half minutes, gave you seven points and four and a half rebounds, right? Before that was Sacramento. Uh, he played 30 games, a longer stint, right? He played 15.2 minutes. And in that 15.2 minutes gave you six points and 5.4 rebounds. If we can get that where he just comes in, gives you 15 minutes a game and gives you six and five a game. Perfect. I mean, that's literally all we need. We don't need some guy to come in and be a superstar and try to take over games and, and be dominant. Now, I would I wish he was bigger for shot blocking purposes and just keep people out of the out of the lane, but he is a better defender, uh, like one on one individual defender than uh winning Gabriel is, as well as Mobamba. Um, so you know, you you, you kind of trade with that, right? Uh, Tristan Thompson also has the ability to switch more than like a Mo Bamba would. So, you know, you take the good with the bad. Again, don't expect him to be like a huge factor, but do expect him to get some some minutes uh, come the play-in and potentially the playoffs. Um, you know, they might throw him in for a couple minutes, but regardless, um, both of these guys, I wouldn't be shocked if neither of them ever see the court. Again, I do think Tristan does more than um, Shaq does, but you know, I, I, I maybe they both get a couple minutes. Maybe both of them uh, play heavy minutes. Maybe they actually crack the rotation. I don't know, um, but Harrison is probably. I think he's a safe bet that he might never see the court, or if he does, it's going to be like in that role that I talked about, where it's like, hey, buddy, I just need you. You're just going to go in there. You're going to play. Give me like five to seven just tough hard minutes uh be physical be aggressive if you get three fouls that's fine go get your three fouls and then pull them out the game you know and just kind of wear down Ja Morant over a seven game series and then Tristan Thompson as the backup uh to kind of provide that but anyway as always this is a discussion so I pass the question on you let me know that's opinions down in the comments below what do you think of these two uh, do you think that they will have the impact on on this team um I don't think they move the needle either way for being honest, maybe Tristan has like a moment or two that's just brilliant. We've seen him do that. Um, but I really don't think that they're, I don't think they're going to have this major impact on this roster. I really don't. But time will tell. We'll see. Uh, do you feel the same way? Do you not? Do you like the signing? Do you not? However you feel, whatever your thoughts are, I'd love to hear it. Let me know down in the comments below.